Dr. Sharon It's my pleasure to welcome in IQ Arasula. IQ is the author of Lifting the Veil, The True Faces of Muhammad and uh, Islam. He is the most articulate, most knowledgeable, and most reasonable person in the world when it comes to presenting the truth about the most deadly issue of our day, Islamic terrorism. Good day, uh, IQ. How are you? I am fine, thank you, sir. Good. Uh, you know, when um, we were doing our show last week, and uh, we addressed the subject of the Iranian uh, negotiations, I recall saying that all I thought we had accomplished was that we had uh, pushed the clock back to a year ago. Remember a year ago when the Abominator was uh, jumping on the bandwagon and saying how great a deal that he had just struck and that he had the outline after negotiating with the Iranians for a year and after lifting most of their sanctions that he had arrived in an outline for a deal? A year later, where are we now? Worse situation than we were a year before. <laughs> yeah, they, there is no deal that has been uh, done with the Iranians. All they have come back to is an outline for a potential deal. And now if you listen to the abominator talk about this deal and you listen to the Grand Ayatollah who spoke about the deal yesterday, I mean, they're, they're speaking from different planets, aren't they? Absolutely. In fact, in opposite directions. So there was no deal. There could no. never be a deal. No. There was no deal. First of all, there can never be a deal with a Muslim. That, I mean, that's just a fact of the matter. Is That's not our opinion, by the way, is it? Where does the Quran say there can never be a deal with a Muslim? Never. Where does the Quran say that? Every single contract he made with anybody. Right. He, broke, he broke every peace agreement he made with everybody or right. anybody. Right. And how does the Ninth Surah begin? Doesn't it say that a treaty between a Muslim and a non-Muslim is not binding on the Muslim? Never binding. Not only right. not binding, yeah. never, never binding. binding. Right. And by the way, what's interesting here is that uh, it doesn't say that a peace treaty shouldn't be negotiated, does it? No, and it doesn't say the peace treaty is not binding on, on either party, does it? No. So from a, the Allah's point of view, which is Muhammad's point of view, uh, a peace treaty negotiated with a Muslim, that the Muslim is encouraged to negotiate it, that they are uh, to hold the, the non-Muslim to all of the terms of the agreement, but that they themselves will honor none of them. Isn't that what it says? Correct. That's exactly what it is. So, so if you're negotiating with a, a Muslim, w wouldn't you read the Ninth Surah before you begin the process? Yes, if you had two brains on the floor, you can. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. But what is the purpose, for example, of negotiating with the Iranians on a nuclear deal? What's the purpose of negotiating with Hamas on statehood? I have absolutely no idea. I mean, how can you negotiate with somebody who tells you, I'm going to kill you? I'm going right. to destroy you. Right. I mean, what did they what have they of... Right. What did the head of the Iranian military say last week on the day that the Obaminator was uh, pounding his chest on he had uh, negotiated a great deal with the Iranians? And he was convening the Republicans who were criticizing his deal, by the way, actually mocking them. What did the head of the Iranian military say on that same day? Do you remember reading it? I did. I didn't. No, but oh. Didn't. Oh, yeah, the head of, of Iran's military, top dog, commander-in-chief, said the destruction of Israel is non-negotiable. Oh, good God, yes. I thought something to do with America. No, no. No, 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 no. He said that it's... Well, that, that says... That should be the standard for the last, what, since, since 1979, by the way. Yeah. But since well, Ayatollah Khomeini... Right. It has not been a negotiable item. They never wavered, ever. They never ever. changed. Ever. And so they, what they did is made it absolutely clear that the purpose of their nuclear bomb is to destroy Israel. Yeah, but I mean, this is, there's an irony here. Okay. The latest reports, honestly, listen, the, the, the okay. latest reports coming from the United States of America, the intelligence services, is that they not only have atomic weapons, yeah. but they have also produced, according to them, thermonuclear weapons as well as neutron bombs. I don't know if you know about this. The neutron bomb. I never thought it was available, honestly, until I received an email about it. It seems, no, there are neutron bombs. And there are, they, 
and Reagan was convinced by Sam Cohen, who created the idea of the neutron bomb, to invest in it because they are used if the Russians attack with uh, masses of uh, tanks, neutron bombs are the very best. Why? Because they destroy the people in their tank, but they do not destroy the tank and they will not leave any residual uh, radiation. Right. Yeah, that's what a neutron bomb is all about. And I, too, have, uh, have read about them. I had thought that since they were uh, in conflict with all of the agreements that America had signed in terms of nuclear proliferation, that we would not have developed them because they are a, a extraordinarily draconian weapon. They are they're lethal to life, but not to the uh, to buildings and machines. Not buildings. No. Right. No. And so they are an ex expressly disgusting. Weapon. They're very much like a uh, using uh, chemical and biological weapons in World War One. The chemical and biological weapons in World War One left no residue after they were used. You know, an hour later, there was no effect except all life was dead. That's what the neutron. That's what the neutron bomb does. So, what you're telling me is America is now releasing information regarding yeah. Israel's development. Of yes. uh, neutron bombs? Not only neutron bombs, thermonuclear weapons also. Okay. So we're not discussing mm -hmm. Hiroshima sized bombs now. Right. When you go to the thermonuclear, the biggest thermonuclear detonation was made on the cruise ship uh, in Russia. Mm -hmm. 100 megatons. Right. And according to the report that the Russians themselves produced at the time, they said they should never be used. Right. Because it could literally destroy the Earth. Correct. Yes, that's that is the that is the nature of a uh, of the the uh, fusion bombs that uh, were developed after the Americans developed the first atom bomb, which was a fission bomb, uh, and then a a fusion bomb is a bomb that is uses a fission uh, explosion, so that it creates it creates such a, a compressive force and such energy via the a fission explosion that it causes hydrogen to fuse, which is which turns the bomb into a, a, a small sun. The sun's energy is the fusion of, uh, of hydrogen. Right? Fusion generates more energy than does fission. Yes. And, uh, and so hydrogen to helium. Correct. Yep. You know your you know your stuff. Now the Iranians are not developing. A fusion bomb. They're developing a fusion bomb. They're taking a uranium. What I'm getting at is that they're threatening somebody who can obliterate their country anyway. Correct. I mean, uh, I mean, right. well, I wouldn't threaten you knowing full well that you can destroy me completely. It doesn't make sense. But isn't it interesting that the abominator, the abominator is trying to shut down Israel and say, okay, all right, we realize that the Iranians are going to have a bomb, but Israel has its own uh, defenses. We shouldn't be worried about Israel. Israel is really the one with the, uh, the nuclear capability. Therefore, uh, we've given up on uh, trying to con control Iran's vulnerability. We're just as Americans now going to tell the world that Israel has the bomb. That's the abominator yes, that making Israel... <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't solve the problem. It, it solves yeah, the problem for Israel. Remember, how many, how many... Israel is going to destroy her, she will use the bomb to destroy them. Right. Now, let's talk about that, because there's two issues there. Sure. One of the things as I, that I have said for a long time is that, that Israel is not going to be nuked by Iran. That's not where they're going to use... Even though that's where they claim they're going to use their nuclear bombs, that's not where they're going to use them, for the very reason you just described. And for another reason, which is that uh, I'm pretty aware of the, with the, the way the Earth rotates, therefore the way the uh, prevailing winds blow, that if Iran were to use a nuclear bomb, a fission bomb, in Israel, they would kill their own people. They would radiate their own people. Because the way they will radiate also about the Arabs also. Oh, they will. They will uh, radiate uh, Syria, uh, yeah, all of Syria, all of Saudi Arabia, and all of Iraq, and all of Iran is going to be poisoned with the residue of, uh, of that bomb if they, uh, they drop it. And so I said, that's, that's not going to happen. And I've also read Yahweh's testimony of future history, and he makes it clear that's not going to happen. But the Iranians are 
Fruit Loops in terms of uh, they've been poisoned with Islam. So they want to die as martyrs killing non-Muslims. So who are they going to kill that won't cause them to be killed in return? Sunnis. Sunnis and also Europeans and Europeans Americans. And Americans. Right. right. The threat has never been to Israel. Israel has the means to defend itself against the nuclear attack. Yahweh's prediction of what's going to happen to Israel, I do isn't a nuclear attack. His, he predicts that a third of the Earth, and it's North America and Europe and parts of, uh, of Russia, a third of the Earth is going to be obliterated in a nuclear holocaust. But it's not Israel. No. Israel is susceptible to numbers. Hundreds of millions of Muslim jihadists are going to flood into Israel right after Israel is forced to sacrifice the, uh, the West Bank. And that is how Muslims are going to attack Israel. But the bomb's not going to be used in Israel. It's going to be used in Europe and the United States. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, I, always that's what, said, uh, I always said that the Iranians are aware that Israel is not a threat to them. They know that. The Arabs, by the way, every single Arab leader knows that Israel is not a threat to them. Never was a threat to any of them. Correct. But for the mass media of the public, the Arab public, the man and the woman right. street, who are totally and utterly stupid animals, right. Right. they talk about Israel this and Israel this and the Zionism and American aggression and Christian aggression. All book. Yes, it is. Well, American aggression is not bold. America has pretty been pretty aggressive in the, in the Islamic world. I mean, we are we're providing the weapons on both sides in the Syrian uh, war. Uh, we are providing the weapons that are being used against the uh, Shias uh, in the uh, in uh, uh, by Saudi Arabia and Yemen. We're providing the weapons used being used by the Shias uh, against the uh, the Sunnis in uh, Syria and Iraq. Uh, Libya. Hello? Yeah, yeah. But America is not the only one. Russia is sending for both sides. The British are sending. Something else that came up yeah. yesterday. Mm -hmm. Billions of dollars were spent in Afghanistan by the American administration to reclaim arid land in Afghanistan. Guess what? Mm -hmm. They converted it for opium or cultivation. There's of course. 60% more opium this year than last year. Right. Only the, under the Taliban, the opium production was nil. But uh, once America invaded, it went back to their providing some 90% of the uh, opium and heroin and for the world. Yeah, America is 100% responsible for that. And what happened to the Christians after the American invasion of Iraq? We'll deal with that answer when we return. Welcome back to Shattering This. So there's a whole lot of insights we can learn, IQ, on the uh, Iranian deal. Number one is when the President of the United States was pounding his chest and, uh, and acting like he was high and mighty and had negotiated this, this incredible deal, had, had you know, established a, a new world order by uh, preventing the Iranians from having a bomb for 10 years. He was blowing smoke. He didn't have a deal. He never had a deal. Never. Right. And he knew he, and he, he, knew he didn't have a deal. He knew he was lying at the time. Yeah, but he's been lying for six, seven years now. Yeah, I know. He's lying 28 times, 28 or 29 times, telling right. the American people, you can have your doctor, you can have this, and you can have it 29 times. Oh, I know. Yeah, you're right. And uh, what, everybody that actually had health insurance found out that, that you can't have your uh, your choice. If you like your plan, you can't have your plan, and you have to have his plan. And So, uh, for example, my wife and I now have his plan. My wife has had a hysterectomy, I've had a vasectomy, and yet we have maternity coverage. You know my, but you know, you know my uh, my view on uh, on uh, drugs. I I just I do not do drugs, and yet I have to pay for a uh, a narcotics recovery plan. I have no choice. Uh, I am not mentally ill. I'm not. Um, uh, I've ever been anywhere in the zip code of being uh, mentally ill and needing a psychiatrist, and yet I have to pay for that kind of coverage. I mean, it's just absurd. Our, uh, our our rates went up. Our rates went up five times. Our deductible went up five times, and the coverage that we have is hugely inferior to what we previously had, all by way of the Affordable Care Act. And we employ a bunch of people on our farm, and every one of them, uh, we are paying more for their health insurance, and they're getting vastly less than they were before. And they are still supporting you. Oh, I see. Seven percent support. Yeah, and that's why I say that 
that percentage, that 37% of Americans that are still supporting the abominator, go to hell. You are too stupid to be to be breathing the same air that the rest of us are uh, are breathing. Just go to hell. And Honestly, stupid. Is even worse. Uh, people like Obama are empowered because of the ignorance of uh, of that 37 percent. They enable him. They enable him. So he was touting a plan that had never occurred on the single most deadly issue of our day, because Islamic terrorism. There's nothing more deadly than Islamic terrorism. And Iran is the single worst nation on earth as it relates to a state sponsorship of Islamic terrorism. And they're on the cusp of developing a nuclear bomb. So on the single biggest issue of our day, he just stood up to the world and lied about having a deal. He didn't have a deal. Okay. Question to you, please. Okay, please. They say the American people are stupid in general, or majority of them are. Now, okay. are the leaders of the West also stupid? Are the Chinese stupid? Are the Russians stupid? No. After all, Iran is a neighbor of Russia. Right. Iran mm -hmm. is not far away from China. So right. China and Russia are the easiest recipients of destruction from Iran. Not going to happen. So why are they agreeing with uh, Obama? Uh, uh, they're not agreeing with Obama. They're agreeing they with Iran. with the Iranians. No, they're agreeing with the they're, they're in lockstep with the Iranians. Why are they in lockstep with the Iranians? Where are the second largest reserves of natural gas in the world? Iran. Yeah, Caspian Sea and uh, area in Iran. Who has the pipelines that take that to a place where it can be used, besides Iran, which has pipelines to the Caspian Sea gas reserves, what other two nations have pipelines to the Caspian Sea? As far as I know, Ukraine. Well, the, the Ukrainian pipeline, Ukraine doesn't actually border the, uh, the uh, Caspian Sea, uh, so it's only an extension of a pipeline that was built by what country? Russia. America? Russia. Uh -huh. Russia. And, well, the American uh, companies built the pipeline for Russia, but it's a Russian pipeline. And the other pipeline was built by Chevron for China. So China and Russia are the biggest beneficiaries in the world of the uh, oil and gas reserves found at the Caspian Sea. And for them to extract the oil and gas and the Caspian Sea via their pipelines, who do they have to have friendly relations with? Iran. Bingo. Now, you want to know why uh, it's Russia that is completing the Iranian uh, nuclear power plants whose daughter products can be used to build a bomb? Do you want to know why uh, Russia is running interference uh, on the, in the United Nations for the Iranian nuclear program? Do you want to know why China is uh, in bed with the Iranians as it relates to uh, their nuclear bomb? Their business is Because they're getting gas and oil cheap? That is correct. That is correct. That is, the, that is the beginning of it. That is the end of it. So Russia is supplying weapons to the, uh, the Iranian ally... Assad in Syria and flying weapons of enormous quantities to Iran. That's how they're paying for the oil and gas that's coming through their pipeline from the Caspian Sea. And China is doing exactly the same thing. Now you understand the world as it exists. And we'll talk in a moment about Saudi Arabia and the United States on the other side. Thank you. Does uh, that perspective help? when you understand the reasons why Russia and China are supportive of Iran and are trading weapons to Iran for, uh, for oil and gas because they have pipelines from the Caspian Sea uh, to the industrial heart of their countries. But it's in the short term only. In the long term when Iran, which is a Shia Islamic state, who hates the Chinese because they are either ungodly in the sense pagan from the point of view of communism or Buddhist and Russia because it's Chinese. Uh, uh, I mean, in the short term, I agree, they make money. And then in the long term, mm -hmm. five, six, seven years in the future, where would yeah. that be? Well, you know, the Russians, Putin was uh, almost lost his hold on power in Russia. And it was uh, during the uh, Belson School bombing. 
And at the time, Russia had uh, had endured far more Islamic terrorist attacks than any country in the world. They not only had the best one school bombing, they had the Moscow uh, theater, and there were uh, a number of planes that were uh, hijacked and crashed, and also there were a number of other schools that were bombed. And then on top of all that, they had the Muslims uh, torching hospitals. So you're aware of all that? Yes. It all came to a screeching halt, where there's very few Islamic terrorist attacks in Russia. A friend of mine... A friend of mine uh, uh, was in the diplomatic corps, and he told me what happened, and I've been um, uh, saying for some time that while I only have indirect evidence, the actual evidence that I can witness verifies what I was told, was that Putin negotiated with the Iranians and told the Iranians, we know that you are the supplier of the weaponry that is being used to fund these terrorist raids. If you stop... We'll cut you a deal. We'll not only supply weapons to, to you, but we will run interference for you on your nuclear program against the United States. All we want is you to stop funding terrorism in Russia. That was the quid pro quo. And from that moment on, Russia ran interference for the Iranian nuclear program and became Iran's primary weapons supplier. Yes. Now, that is a short-term, sure, is a short-term solution that Iran will ultimately turn on their benefactor. The same thing, by the way, is true in China. And will they eventually turn on their benefactor? But when you look at Iran's negative rhetoric and their, their, the hatred and rage they spew, are they spewing their hatred and rage towards Russia and China or towards Europe, the United States, uh, and uh, Israel? I guess they like, they like yeah, yeah. So when Iran does have a nuclear capability, which is inevitable, even Obama said, uh, yeah, it's inevitable. They're going to have a nuclear capability. Is it going to be a nuclear capability on the same level of the United States and Russia, or is it going to be a very limited nuclear capability? But limited in the hands of terrorists. No. It's not the same thing as unlimited in the hands okay. of Russia and China. Okay, but if they if they have let's say, 20 nuclear bombs, which would be way beyond what I think they're going to have. I think they'll have closer to 10. Are they going to use their nuclear bombs in Russia and China, or are they going to use their nuclear bombs in the United States and in Europe? In Europe and the United States, because they know there will be no retaliation. There you go. So that's why the Russians and the Chinese know that they can continue to do business with them, knowing that uh, they run no risk of, uh, of Iranian nuclear retaliation. That's the world. That's the world. Yeah, yeah. That's, we are it's the, definitely uh, heading for a different okay. universe. Yeah, the United States, by by removing the sanctions and by negotiating these past two years with the Iranians while they were developing and enriching uranium at an ever faster rate, facilitated its own demise. We pulled the trigger on the very gun that will blow our brains out. And they will be. They will yes. be doing that. They will yes. no there's absolutely no doubt. It's a matter of time. Right. It's a matter of now, when, not right. a matter of if. Now the Chinese and the uh, and the Russians are a little bit more um, one sided on their weapons. They provide weapons to Iran and to Iran's allies uh, because of the Caspian Sea gas and oil reserves. The United States is non discriminatory. Who is the primary weapons supplier to Iraq? United States. Right. And the weapons that are being deployed in Iraq, are they being deployed by Sunnis or Shias? Shias. <laughs> Shias. And so, okay, and who is the primary weapons supplier to Saudi Arabia? Also America. Right. And who is uh, Saudi Arabia, with their own version now of Vietnam, bombing and attacking in, uh, in Yemen? The Shia. Ah, uh, there we go. So, is the United States supplying the weapons on both sides of the conflict? No question about it. They've yeah. always done it. Yeah. So had the British, and so had the French. Yeah. They, I mean, it's the biggest business in the world. But after pornography, mm -hmm. the biggest moneymaker is military. Right. And 
who is the largest supplier of military weapons of death and destruction by 20 times bigger than the next largest country? Who is the primary merchant of death in the world? Only America. That is correct. And so what you found this week is that America touted a nuclear agreement that they knew was not an agreement. Negotiating with a party that they knew would never honor the agreement because the Quran says don't honor the agreement. And, and all that America was doing is pushing the rest of the world to respond. So what is Saudi Arabia going to do now that they know there's going to be no nuclear deal? Well, uh, the latest arrangement is for Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Pakistan, and uh, Jordan, and of course the Gulf states, to unite militarily against Iran and the Shia. That is correct. And what war is that going to start? World War Three, obviously. Correct. And who's going to win in that war? Uh -huh. According to God, it could be the Israelites. Well, I hope that, uh, God is saying that the uh, that the Magog War, which is the uh, the the Israelite, uh, uh, the Muslims attacking Israel, uh, that God himself is going to intervene because the Israelites can't defend themselves, uh, that uh, it will be himself that will intervene. But I would ask you, between the Sunnis and Shias, this war that America ignited when we made it right. Because the Sunnis are 85% of the Muslim right. world. Right. So the Sunnis are going to win, and when the Sunnis win, what are they going to do? Well, turn on the West, of course. Yeah, that is correct. They're going to turn on the West, and particularly Israel. Now that's, that is, is there any chance of what we've just described not occurring? That, that, that this unification pact between Saudi Arabia and Jordan and Pakistan and other uh, Sunni countries against Iran and Shia Islam, is there any chance that that's not going to materialize? There's no chance in hell it won't. It will not materialize. They have no choice. Absolutely. And that means that means more and more Arab countries, which are unstable countries, will have that right. question. That's correct. So that is that is a uh, a data complaint. And is there any chance that the Shias are going to win out uh, manned uh, almost uh, 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 five to one, or an outgun twenty five to one? Is there any chance that the uh, that's going to be an outcome different than the Sunnis prevailing? No, it can't be. Right. And is there any chance that when they're done playing war against each other and the, uh, and the annihilation of, uh, of Shia Islam and the conversion of everyone to Sunni Islam and there are united caliphates now, where are they going to point all of those weapons that they've uh, had all this practice using? In a microsecond Israel. Correct. And that's exactly what Yahweh told us was going to happen. He even told us when it was going to happen. He told us what the events surrounding that would happen. And he even told us whose weapons they would be wielding. Americans' weapons immediately after America forces Israel to forego the West Bank becomes sent at the waist. And this is going to begin in the late fall of 2026. That's when the last, when those weapons turn from killing Shias to killing the Israelites. Now you know the history of the world, past, present, and future. And the single biggest contributor to this mess was America when it invaded Iraq and gave Iraq to Iran. That's what started it all. Well, I, I, I know you want to go one step further. Yeah. yeah, you want to go one step behind it. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. By it was you're right. Yeah, you're right. The uh, the first wave of this. Yeah, in fact, the first the first wave of this was uh, was Carter two fold over. And you're right. Yeah, because and, and any people to occupy the embassy of the United States of America, which is a declaration of war. My international law is a declaration of war. Right. And not do anything about it. That was it. That's the beginning of it. Yeah, and uh, he actually facilitated the return of the Ayatollah over the Shah because he undermined the uh, the Shah, uh, and uh, so he facilitated the return of the Ayatollah. That was the that was the catalyst for the first phase. But then under Carter, next he uh, he empowered Islamic terrorism. The first really to use Islamic terrorists as proxies with the United States when. Uh, when Carter came up with this stupid plan uh, to uh, arm the Taliban and Al-Qaeda with $5 billion of weapons to fight a proxy war against the, uh, the Soviets in Afghanistan, uh, that lit the fuse of what 
has become the initial battles now of World War III. True, I'm not disagreeing with you regarding the invasion of Iraq, but the beginning of the empowerment of Islam started with Carter. Oh, you're right, and in two ways. Uh, when he uh, allowed the Shah to uh, to fall, swept the Shah aside to allow the Ayatollah to come back, and then when he uh, sent $5 billion worth of American weapons to the Taliban and to Al-Qaeda to go fight the proxy war against uh, the Soviets and their influence in Afghanistan, that was the one-two punch that began World War III. And then George Bush uh, blew it to sky high when he invaded Iraq and gave Iraq to Iran. Yeah. In every case we are discussing now, Iran is the linchpin. Yes. It's the linchpin to, well, actually, the United States is the linchpin that uh, enabled Iran and Shiite Islam to grow in influence and that we uh, we started arming both sides so that we created a religious civil war between the Shia and Sunni Islam, which will be resolved over the next 10 years at the cost of hundreds of thousands of lives. And all the while now, they're developing nuclear bombs, and they're going to turn what would have been the deaths of hundreds of thousands of Muslims into hundreds of thousands, if not billions, of non-Muslims. That's where we find ourselves. And I think there's only a couple people in the world, IQ, that are warning the world of this fate. IQ, how many Christians were there in Iraq before the American invasion? In 2003, 1.3 million. How many Christians are there in Iraq now after the U.S. invasion? Less than 200,000 and leaving. Would you consider that annihilation? Yes, of course. Not only annihilation, they're not only killing people. They're not only slaughtering them and raping them and taking them as hostages. They have destroyed every single church of any mm -hmm. dimension in history completely and utterly. Did the Americans... Uh, now 1, did, years old. Yeah, did the Americans uh, kill the Christians and blow up their churches? No. Did the Americans create the uh, the ability for the Shiite and Sunni Muslims to blow up the churches and kill the Christians? Yes, of course. Right. Now, if you were, uh, and I don't know uh, jurisprudence in, uh, in Europe, uh, and you're living in, uh, in Europe, but in the United States, if, um, if somebody commits a murder and you provided the, the, the weapon and you provided the access the ability of the person to commit a murder, and you provided the weapon that was used in the murder, uh, you'll be tried and convicted as a murderer. Correct. Didn't America do both of those things in Iraq? Yep. So yep. whose who's soul has been stained by the, uh, by the, the annihilation of 1.1 million Christians in Iraq? Who bears the blame? Well, not only America. Yeah. The silence is not... America created... Facilitated it. Right. We facilitated it. Correct. But the silence of the Christians around the world has been deafening. Yeah, you know, that. for eight years yeah. I have been talking about this subject. For yeah. eight years. Nobody mm -hmm. was talking about this subject for eight years. Mm -hmm. you, know, you and I have been. Uh, you know, yeah, we have just outlined the world as it is and the world as it's going to be over the next ten years. We've told people exactly what is happening, why it is happening, who started all of this, who's, who's exacerbating all of this, and exactly what's going to happen over the next 10 years. You don't think there's anybody else doing this? No. Nobody. Literally nobody. nobody. Why, don't you, why don't you tell me something, IQ, that's a more important topic than what we have been discussing? Nothing is more important. The survival of the human civilization, that is the most important. And we are discussing it. We've we are discussing it for it's, years it's, now. It's utter and complete annihilation of humanity is what we're talking about here. Absolutely. And it is absolutely inevitable because of the ignorance and irrationality of the vast preponderance of people who are unwilling to listen to what we're telling them. Absolutely. Yes, it's not only American leaders. The European leaders are complicit. The clergy are complicit. When the Pope says he couldn't find anything wrong, anything aggressive in the Quran, 
The leader of 1.2 billion people? I mean, for God's sake, what are we discussing? Yeah, what is the, he serves has wiped them out to the last. It says, use whatever weapons you can muster to continue to fight the, uh, the enemies of, uh, of Allah and his messenger for all time. Lay in wait for them. Inflict such a, a devastating defeat on them that, uh, that all the world will be reminded of what we have done. We'll pay. Because Islam is terror. It's based on terror. It was created through terror and it still dominates itself through terror. Yeah, you know, I have, uh, I've changed my view of that ever so slightly based upon a really good friend of mine who is, uh, who is more knowledgeable than I am and relates to Islam. I used to say Islam was a terrorist manifesto, that it was a terrorist dogma, and that it was predicated exclusively on terror. I don't say that anymore. And it's because of this fellow named I.Q. Al-Rasuli. Yeah, this fellow called uh, I.Q. Al-Rasuli. Terrorism is a tactic that was deployed. Uh, yeah, terrorism is a tactic that was deployed by Muhammad to, uh, to um, establish his crime syndicate. The, Islam at its heart is a criminal enterprise, and terror is the tactic that is used to rob the defenseless, to control the defenseless. I would like to say something. By the way, would you I, disagree with any of that? I mean, I, I've, I've taken this from you, and because I realize that as I, as I analyze everything that I have learned about Islam from the Quran and Hadith, you are correct. Islam at its heart is, uh, is the battle of Badar. It never grew beyond Badar, which was a which was a, a raid to rob a civilian enterprise, and that terror was the tactic that was used. Correct. Uh -huh. Go ahead, I can finish with we'll that. We'll discuss it next week, because I was discussing predators. If you look at a predator, yes. an organism that kills by preying on other organisms, a person or group that robs, victimizes, or exploits others for gain. This is what Islam is. Yeah. Your contribution to the world by describing Islam as a criminal enterprise is one of the greatest gifts that humanity has ever been given. And we'll pursue that next week. Thank you, sir. Time. Thank you. May God bless you.